my dear students today i will be taking up one of the topics which i saw that few questions were asked in the last year and the topic is megaloblastic anemia now we will be going in detail about the classification of anemias but here about megaloblastic anemia let's take some important points which are asked and about this megaloblastic anemia if we just go back and retrace the physiology of anemias you know that there are those types of cells which we call as macrocytes and this megaloblastic anemia is composed of larger cells which we call as macrocytes and this type of anemia is also called as macrocytic anemia now first of all we have to remember what are the various important causes of megaloblastic anemia frequently asked and they give three choices correct and one choice incorrect so you have to remember each and every cause of megaloblastic anemia so first of all you have to remember that the liver diseases hepatic disorders they cause megaloblastic anemia in addition to liver diseases there is this important vitamin b12 and folic acid deficiency which are prime causes of megaloblastic anemia in addition to liver diseases, vitamin B12 deficiency, folic acid deficiency, hypothyroidism is an important cause of megaloblastic anemia. There is this important tapeworm disorder, the fish tapeworm infestation and aurotic aciduria which are frequently asked as causes of megaloblastic anemia. So we have these important causes. Now. If we take some drugs for a prolonged period of time, can they cause megaloblastic anemia? Surely, multiple drugs cause megaloblastic anemia. And what are they? Again, asked frequently. First of all, you remember a very important anti-epileptic drug, the, uh, I think, a broad-spectrum anti-epileptic, that is the phenytoin, hydrantoin. It causes megaloblastic anemia. In addition to phenytoin, we have got this anesthetic agent nitrous oxide this question I have seen multiple times asked nitrous oxide as a cause of which type of anemia then we have the phenobarbitone in addition to phenobarbitone we have got primidone and multiple cytotoxic drugs like hydroxyurea and methotrexate they cause megaloblastic anemia so these points you have to remember anyway so then, what are the various important features which you come across a blood film or the lab values which would be suggestive of megaloblastic anemia? The first thing would be a decreased hemoglobin. Now, after that, you will notice an unusual finding of increased MCV and increased MCH values as far as the hemogram is concerned. So, you have to remember increased MCV and increased MCH. Then, you have multi-segmented nuclei within the neutrophils, hypersegmented neutrophils, which are pathognomic of megaloblastic anemia. And isocytosis, naturally, it can be a part of anemia, many anemias. And you also have to remember that there will be bigger size cells, the macrocytes, as I have mentioned in the beginning of my uh, lecture. Then one characteristic feature of megaloblastic anemia is hobble jolly bodies, basically chromosomal remnants. Hobble jo jolly bodies are characteristic of megaloblastic anemia. Now, sometimes other cell lineages can be affected and you can be having a full-fledged pancytopenia as a lab feature of megaloblastic anemia. You have to remember this point. Now, in the blood, you will be having increased homocysteine levels. Increased homocysteine levels in serum are associated with megaloblastic anemia. Now, apart from the usual symptomatology and signs of anemia, what is very characteristic about megaloblastic anemia? You have to remember that there is this very important condition which we call as subacute degeneration of the cord. 
You know the spinal cord. It has got the posterior columns, the fasciculus gracilis and the fasciculus cuneatus, which carry the sensation of position and vibration. And due to certain reasons, the posterior columns of the spinal cord are affected in vitamin B12 deficiency as well as folic acid deficiency and they cause this SADC subacute degeneration of the cord which presents with loss of position and vibration sense and neurological uh, complaint in many patients. Now after that you also have atrophic gastrites apart from usual fatigue, easy fatigability which is associated with anemias. You can be having macroglossia as well as atrophic glossites associated with megaloblastic anemia. The bone marrow would show megakaryocytosis, large megakaryocytes. So I think these, this panel, these points which I have just enlisted, if you remember these points, about megaloblastic anemia, I think nothing more can be asked from megaloblastic anemia other than this. These are very high yield points I have just mentioned and I hope you just remember them and I will wish you good luck for your coming examinations and academic engagements. Thanks a lot.